Before we get started, my fairy fantasy novel, The Ghost of Nothing, is now an audiobook. Be sure to check it out. There are fairies on the farm. For several years, I'd experienced the same dream. At least, I initially assumed it was a dream. In the middle of the night, fast asleep in my bed, I would be rudely awakened by a furious wind raging over me. At times, it was like a swarm of angry bees, other times like a powerful jet engine. But each time, it was wholly terrifying. Each time, I felt as though I were awake, in that I knew that I was in my bedroom and my critical faculties were online, but I was unable to move. Figuring it must be a type of dream, I always tried to goad myself to awake, without much success. I just had to endure the wind. Since this event was happening fairly regularly, about four times a year, and since it was so disturbing, I attempted to research it. My research led me to believe I was suffering from sleep paralysis, although I could find no reference to such a wind in any of the books I consulted. Time went by. As someone who likes to pass their time with a good book and with an interest in history, I was browsing books on a popular online retailer and came across Emma Wilby's book, Cunning Folk and Familiar Spirits. It's a well-researched book and I highly recommend it. But what I read inside was of immense interest to me, for in it she mentions the phenomenon of the fairy whirlwinds. There are several fairy tales in which an ordinary mortal is transported to the other world via a sudden whirlwind. This is what I think was happening to me. Soon enough, it happened again. I woke up in the middle of the night because of a hot blast of wind, but this time, instead of fighting against it, I just kind of relaxed. And a good thing, too, for what happened next was the most remarkable experience of my life. The wind picked me up, and I was swept feet first through the window. I felt that I was fully awake when this happened, but I wasn't afraid, because I also felt that this must be a dream, because what was happening wasn't possible. I was floating, flying over the most amazing city. Beautiful music drifted up from below that I can only describe as a radiant kind of soul music. The city, which was in the sky, floating on a cloud, extended as far as my eyes could see. There were towers, spires, and domes, each constructed of stone of various hues. The city was not static, but seemed to be in a constant state of movement. Great tenements floated past each other. The city felt as though it were alive. Eventually, I alighted amid a vibrant landscape, a rock that was floating among the clouds, From this vantage point, I could see various buildings serenely floating by me. The wonderful music, as loud and clear as if I had headphones on, continued. A little later on, I found myself in a darkened room. I'm not sure how I ended up there. There was a wardrobe from which a scuffling noise emanated. I opened it up and found a small stone statue which came alive the moment I touched it, which certainly gave me the creeps. The creature was about knee height. It had a wizened head and grayish-green skin. I remember clearly that it had some form of ritual scarification on its face, three curved lines that were cut into each cheek. Overall, there was a sense that she or he was tremendously ancient. My immediate reaction was, aha, here is a brownie. And at once, I seemed to know the creature's name. 
but having read later of the taboo of sharing fairy names, it shall have to remain a secret. For although I was an atheist at the time, I am no longer. My companion took me by the hand in the way a child would, and together we sat on the bed. It was talking to me, but I couldn't understand a word of it. The language was all garbled, high-pitched, and whispery, but I was able to discern a single word, goal. The meaning of this was made clear, for in the next moment we were playing a game similar to basketball, but played with a teddy bear. I took a shot, and the teddy bear went through the hoop, and I immediately woke up. And then I knew. The whole thing had been a dream, no matter how real it had seemed in the moment. I know people will say it was just a dream, and that may be, but it was no ordinary dream. For throughout the experience, I had the sense that I was awake, and the visions were rendered into my eyes in the most sublime detail. Since waking life is basically a series of moving images and sensations, why should I dismiss this experience as a mere dream, when those images and sensations were so utterly real? I've since read that many witches reported that they'd been lying in their beds when they were taken away to fairyland. I can now understand this predicament. <laughs> The experience was just so convincingly real that to this day I'm certain I've been to fairyland. What are fairies? I have no idea. But this experience utterly changed the way I conceive of the world. I'm a practicing pagan and my experience happened during a full moon ritual. I don't belong to a specific sect or a group of pagans. I'm a believer in all things in nature, including that which most often can't be seen. So one night I was in a little spot where I often went for these rituals. It was in Seattle and I was near a wooded area. So while there, just meditating and thinking about my intentions for the full moon, I started to notice these zip type noises. It was like a hummingbird flying by, sort of zippy. Trying to stay focused and not be distracted, I didn't look to see what the noises were. I started blessing some jewelry and stones for a friend when I suddenly realized I was surrounded by a circle of mushrooms that weren't there before. At least I didn't notice them, and this is the type of thing I would have noticed. But I wasn't frightened or disturbed by this so much. Instead, I had this feeling of deep warmth, love, and happiness. And I remember thinking that something magical was happening, like the earth itself was guiding me. I looked up toward the moon and saw tiny lights flickering white and blue. I felt drawn toward the lights, and I got up, left my ritual space, and followed them to the wooded area that was nearby. But when I got to the woods, the lights were gone. I returned to my ritual space and realized that several of my things were missing. I looked through everything and realized that the list of things that were missing were some honey, honeysuckle, some hemp cord, and a small marble-sized moonstone. I can't explain how these things went missing. They were there, like, five seconds earlier. I have heard from people in the area that there are places in the woods of Seattle where fairies can be found. The feeling I had at the beginning of the experience and after are something I can only associate with fairies. I think fairies are creatures that guard nature. I'm a pagan witch, and I've had many encounters with fairies. I do not work with the fairies, but I do my research and have run these encounters past those I know that work with them. One of those people is Mint Fairy. She's actually how I found your channel a couple of years ago. The longest story I have is still happening. 
I have a gnome in my house. I've always been able to feel energies, and I've been around spirits my whole life. As I got older, I started to be able to see the things I was feeling. One night, a couple months ago, I was talking with my sister and her boyfriend who were sitting on the couch across from me, and I felt something behind my sister's boyfriend. I told them there was something in the room. They're used to me saying this stuff by now. They asked me the typical questions like, is it evil? What is it? Etc. I told them I didn't know, but as I focused on the area, it became clearer. In my mind, I saw a small, round man who was sitting almost on my sister's boyfriend's shoulder. He was kicking his feet and sort of giggling at me. And then when I blinked, suddenly I could see him perfectly clearly sitting right in front of me. I blinked again, and then he was gone. Later on in that home, when my sister's boyfriend was trying to sleep, he heard something running around the bed in the dark. I did divination later in that room and was given enough evidence that it was a gnome. I think the gnome took a liking to me or became interested, I guess. I'm not sure because I would see the same creature out of the corner of my eye or running around the corner. When I moved to a new apartment, I did a money spell on my altar. I had a small statue of a gnome since they symbolize wealth and money. I took some pictures of the candle spell and sent them to a witch friend. And in all of the pictures and video, there is this one green orb flying around the statue. This gnome also likes to knock things over and sit in my closet. Before I was 100% sure about any of this, I asked a friend of mine who is sensitive to check things out. I didn't tell her any details. I just said, the closet in my room, you feel anything there? She took one look at it, looked at me, and goes, I didn't want to tell you, but I think there's a gnome in there. So yeah, I have a gnome in my home. And every seasonal holiday, I'll leave them some oat milk with some honey. Or when I do money or prosperity magic, I'll leave something out for him. This happened in Croatia. I was watering my plants on my balcony when I turned and noticed by my right side at the height between my elbow and shoulder, a weird shimmering air mass. It was without a shape, but similar in appearance to hot air when emerging from hot asphalt, but it was not hot outside. It's actually hard to describe what this looked like because it was like tiny sparkles forming a mass, like a small ethereal cloud. I had never seen anything like it before. For the first moment, I thought, I'm hallucinating. But I blinked several times and averted my eyes, and it was still there, moving. Like millions of very, very tiny, shimmering, transparent fireflies forming a moving cloud. I don't believe in fairies with wings and sparkly little creatures hiding in the flowers. Although I do believe in the Danish she and nature spirits, so this was quite a surprise for me. This cloud moved in place while my breath was taken away, trying to figure out if my brain was deceiving me. But my sight is great, and I'm completely sane, and I don't take any alcohol or any sort of drugs. The strange thing was that I had a rush of some strange energy that I can't quite explain, like I never felt it before. Not strong feelings like sadness or happiness, just a different feeling, which passed through my whole body. Then I tried to touch the mass, and these tiny lights moved between my fingers. I removed my hand, and they disappeared. But it was definitely something I had never seen before. There was something there. It was not due to heat or a gas mass evaporating. They weren't insects. They shimmered. And it was not some sun reflection. It appeared during the day, and the light was good. 
but there was no sun. It was a cloudy day. And that feeling I had was something entirely strange. It was just this cloud or mass of tiny, ethereal, transparent things. What can I say? Like fireflies, but not fireflies? And they shimmered, like air plankton. They shimmered when moving. I don't believe fairies are little beings in sparkly dresses hiding in the flowers. I never have. But I was raised a believing and practicing pagan. My personal view of fairies is old-fashioned. I have Irish ancestry. And I perceive them more as human-sized beings or forms of energy. And not like sparkly masses flowing around plants. But this is what I actually saw. Not with my mind's eye, but with my real eyes. I do believe in different energy forms, like essences, to avoid using the word soul, and that energy is everywhere, in all the realms. I do believe in parallel realms, and I believe that each energy is different, and it can take different shapes. I believe there are different beings, and that some of them are much higher forms of life than mortals. I think fairies are ancient gods, and I do believe they exist in between what mortals can perceive with physical senses. This happened in England, the West Midlands. I was on a long drive, and I decided to park to make a call and have a cigarette. As I sat there, I glanced toward the side of the road and saw two fairies sort of drifting around some fireweed. They were humanoid, fairly opaque at times, shining. I watched them for what seemed like a couple minutes before they flitted off. This wasn't completely out of the ordinary for me. I used to see them regularly as a child but these sightings became less common as I got older. This incident was eight years ago. I'm a hereditary witch and contact and work with fairies a lot, but although I sense them and they can cause mischief in my house, I can no longer see them. But that day, I saw them. Why do I think they were fairies? Appearance, feeling, activity, family knowledge of fairies... As for what fairies are, well, that's a good question. I think nature spirits. I think fairies might be related to the Native American belief that everything in nature has its own energy, and that energy sometimes manifests and is personified by us. This happened in Ireland, County Down. It was a summer's day in 2016. I was sat in my garden relaxing. I should add I'd been through a traumatic experience a few years before and feel like it adjusted my aerials, as it were. I dabble in witchcraft and have been interested in fairy lore for a while and had been leaving offerings by the pond in the garden. It was one of the rare times I had no technology with me whilst I was sat there. I believe this may be significant, since I was unable to take a photo. As I was enjoying the sunshine and totally relaxed, all of a sudden, in front of my eyes, about one to two meters away, something materialized. There was no obvious flight path into my vision that it took. It just appeared out of thin air. My brain did that thing where it tried to make sense of what I was seeing, so I ran through the options. Is it a bird? Not like any bird I've ever seen. Is it an insect? It was the size of my hand, so I ruled that out. As I began looking more closely, I noticed a pair of tiny feet dangling off the bottom of the body. It's a flippin' fairy, came into my head as I sat frozen, watching it hover in front of me. 
After a short time that felt like ages, it flew off over the roof. And I burst into tears as the whole thing was very overwhelming. It appeared as a typical Victorian-era fairy, a very small humanoid with wings. It was all brown in color. The thing is, I know that fairies typically look a lot different from this sanitized version I saw, but maybe it was presenting itself in an image I'd understand. I don't know, but that's what I saw. It was small, about the size of my hand, all brown in color with double wings. I know Ireland has lots of connections to fairies, but wasn't sure about the particular area I was in. I think fairies are an ancient race that exist in a parallel dimension to us, but can slip between worlds. About 2 a.m. late August 2010, I encountered something. I was just lying down to finally go to sleep. At the foot of my bed, there is a big dresser, not easily moved. On said dresser is my witch's altar, and on that altar is an abalone shell with about five gold bells. When I lay down and pulled the covers up, one of the bells rang for a solid ten seconds. It was a steady, faint chiming of a singular bell. I was still fairly wide awake at this point, so when the chiming stopped, I told my grandma in the other room. But she hadn't heard a thing. Other general paranormal stuff happens in our house as well, and paranormal things run in our family. I should also note I had recently built, about two months ahead of the encounter, a small fairy house in the backyard in its own little nook. It was just ten seconds of a single small metallic bell chime. From what I've heard, usually when bells chime, among other signs, it signifies that a fairy is near. I think it was a fairy specifically in part because I had recently built that little house for them. Since then, I've left gifts of honey, milk, crystals, glitter, and surrounded their home with parsley, sage, and a few other plants. I don't know what else to say. I believe fairies are real, but I don't know if what I encountered was a malevolent or benevolent type, because both do exist. Like I said, this isn't the first paranormal thing my family has encountered, and certainly not the first I've encountered although none of the other encounters were specifically fairy-related, just general spooky stuff. But this one, to me, felt fae. Thanks for watching, and thanks to all those who submitted their stories for this one. If you like what I do here on this channel and you haven't already, please make sure to check out my novel, The Ghosts of Nothing. It's about a girl from a famously haunted town that turns out to have a bigger fairy problem than a ghost problem. It has a similar vibe to this channel and is based on a huge amount of research I've done into fairy folklore. It's available in all different book formats, including now as an audiobook on Audible. It's been getting very positive reviews, and it's now a finalist in the Wishing Shelf Book Awards. So if it sounds like something you might enjoy, please don't hesitate to check it out. Links in the description and in the comments. If you have a story to share, you can check out my channel's website at scaryfairygodmother.com, link in the description. It has a spot where you can submit your stories, comments, questions, or suggestions. You can also sign up for my mailing list that dedicated to the channel, Fairy Lights. You can also head over to my writing website, also linked in the description, and join The Shaken Tree, a mailing list dedicated exclusively to my writing. Extra special thanks to all of my supporters on Patreon and to anyone who has joined the channel or made a one-time donation through PayPal or Coffee. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys and the support you are giving this work. 
If you like this channel, the stories I tell here, and would like to lend your support, please check out my Patreon page and the other support options in the description below. I've started to upload versions of my videos that are ad-free, stories only, no intro, no outro, for channel members and Patreon members, so if that's something you're interested in, please consider becoming a member. The stories in this video came courtesy of subscribers and the fairy census, so thanks to everyone who submitted. The stories were edited for dramatic and narration reasons. To read the census stories, follow the link in the description. Don't forget to leave a comment below, like, share, and subscribe if you're new. It really helps the channel. And hit the bell to receive notifications of new videos. And until next time, this has been a visit from your scary fairy godmother.